There we go. The trooper aligned once more. That was for you, B-Boy, but no, it was actually uh, bothering me as well. I just kept forgetting about it. And damn whoever you were for telling me that that kind of looks Hitler-esque because now I can't not see that. So I'm going to probably change that arrangement. But anyways, I got a good laugh out of that. One of the comments that that box configuration looked like a cartoon caricature of, of Hitler. So anyways, it is Sunday. It is July 2nd. We are here for the July 2nd, 2017 edition of VR News. So let's jump right into it. Almost forgot the cheers. And get down to the first news story, which has to do with additional changes via Metal 2 that Apple has been making to the Mac OS system to ready it for virtual reality down the pipe. Now, we know what some of those changes were based on the conference last month. This one slipped through the cracks, but it's arguably two of the most important functions for virtual reality, single pass stereo and direct to display. So uh, one of the Apple GPU software team members uh, at that event talked about those two additions specifically. And what we call single pass stereo is essentially rendering to the left eye and the right eye with a single draw instead of one for each eye. And that is usually what confuses people with SLI because you would think natively, well, SLI should be a benefit, but it's that necessity, that requirement for stereoscopic rendering that means no, natively SLI doesn't benefit, it can actually make it worse. You've got to adopt and adapt it to make it work for virtual reality and get a benefit out of it. And they're working on that, but progress pretty slow. So Apple is calling this viewport array feature and it's basically that. So they've created a texture that takes up the space between what the left eye and right eye can see and renders it in one pass of a GPU cycle, which again, stereoscopic renderings, single pass stereo. The next one is direct to display and direct to display. When you plug an HMD into a computer natively, it thinks of it as a monitor, just a dumb PC monitor terminal. The problem with that is there's a lot of baggage overhead, you know, in the form of latency and a bunch of other stuff associated with that. So instead, what they need to do, people who program HMDs to work specifically with a PC, is not treat the HMD like that, treat it differently and be able to program directly to the HMD. Some of that has to do with, you know, the distorted image that is ultimately the one that gets adjusted and rendered on your HMD. So this just making that happen, they can do that. But an important piece of the puzzle for Apple to work with VR in the months to follow. So direct to display and single pass stereo part of Metal 2 and Mac OS now. Now this next story, I got a chuckle out of this only because it pretty much showed exactly how absurd patent filings can be, right? At their root, at their core. I've talked about this before. Basically, they're done out of legal necessity, right? They're done to protect a company. Most of the time, patents never get acted on. They don't, you know, necessarily become part of a company's roadmap. Again, they're there to protect. So then you get this filing, and this was spotted by Biz Journals, where Universal filed the patent for something a lot of people have already been doing. And I love the legalese, right? The technical wording of something that could be summed up into two sentences. So here's the patent, and I am going to read the entire thing just because it is so absurd. Here goes. Present embodiments relate to a systems and methods of providing an augmented reality, a VR experience, a mixed reality experience, or a combination thereof as part of an attraction, such as a thrill ride in an amusement park or theme park. 
In certain embodiments, each ride passenger may be provided a pair of electronic goggles or eyeglasses to be worn during a cycle of the thrill ride. The electronic goggles may facilitate an AR experience, a VR experience, or a combination of both experiences. Thus, the electronic goggles may be referred to as AR VR goggles. So a huge dose of the Captain Obvious, right? All of that is basically them saying, yeah, we're going to have rides where people wear VR goggles. That's basically the entire thing summed up. So one sentence instead of a paragraph. But again, it's one of those legal requirements. That's what they did. It doesn't take away from the fact that it's hilarious as hell, though. Now, on the cooler front for Universal, they have been working on expanding their brand as of late. And we always hear about Disney and you hear about, you know, lots of other theme parks around the world. Not so much all the time from Universal. Now, one of the things they recently did flew over my radar was opening a Super Nintendo World theme park in Japan, which sounds pretty damn cool. Hadn't heard of it. We'll check it out after the news. All right. And this... Third news piece. So Queen have created a, a VR experience titled VR The Champions. Now, technically this is the second, but I guess the argument is, is that the first one was more of a Brian May solo VR thing as opposed to a Queen as a unit, right? This is them working on it as a unit. What I find really interesting is not just that they called it VR the Champions, but anyone who's a, a you know a fan of musical history, it doesn't even really matter what genres, whether you're old enough or not, you probably know that the big kind of comeback resurgence moment for Queen was 1985's Live Aid, where Freddie Mercury just had the audience literally eating out of his hand. I mean, it was just an amazing thing to see. Again, whether you like them, their music, all irrelevant. He was the consummate performer on that day. I mean, it was just magic is what it was. And all the songs that they're covering on this were part of that 20-minute set list. So it doesn't surprise me at all. You know, to me, Queen kind of died, and I know some bands can live on, right? But to me, look at ACDC, but to me, Queen died when Freddie did, and one of the band members shared that same opinion, hasn't toured with them since the early 90s. Uh, Adam has a great voice, don't get me wrong, but to me, it's more like a cover band now, even though the instrumentals, well, two of them are Queen, the rest just feels a little bit manufactured, but definitely will check out the VR experience regardless. Uh, I do like some of their music. So this is going to be uh, $9.99 US, so basically 11 or 10 pounds uh, equal 10.99 euros and uh, available through VTR Go platform. So now, if I would have picked a queen performance to do in VR, it would have been that 85 one. Sadly, the tech for that just didn't exist. All right. And the next story, the last one here, Beyond Anime and Manga, we have uh, the Tokyo content show, which basically showcased augmented and virtual reality, and it was stunning. And we talked about one or two small stories out of that, but we didn't really cover the event. I'm going to do a better job of that next year, because looking back at what they did, it was pretty damn stunning. So they had, you know, these massive cavernous exhibition halls dedicated to virtual reality and all kinds of booths, uh, multiplayer, co-op, single player VR experiences, literally just a flood of VR activity. So kind of a little sad that I missed that. And then there's also the Mars Animation Planet, which is a CGI animation house. These guys are affiliated with Sega. They also offered a VR ex uh, exhibit, basically inspired Resident Evil, bit more science fiction thrown in, and basically a massive 3D multiplayer mayhem battleground at the event. So... Very cool. Uh, it would be awesome to be able to go to these events. And hopefully, things work out plan-wise, I'll be able to do exactly that within a year or two, because that sounded pretty damn cool. 
All right, guys, that is it for the news on this July 2nd. Uh, we've got another holiday, like I said, with the American Independence Day coming up. Hopefully, uh, with the weekend fading behind us, you guys have a good start to the week tomorrow. Cheers, guys.